Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to a profession tutorial, the one that you guys have been waiting for. Today I'm going to explain to you all the professions and their uses and what you need to know about them. So let's start off first what my profession is. I'm a miner and miner is just basically a simple profession, a gathering profession that is used for mining rock. So if you want to get a profession, you talk to Jessica either in your camp or in 101. Talk to Jessica, view cert introduction. And as you can see, these are all the certs that there is in the game. Lumberjack, miner and hemp picker are three gathering professions that have advantages. So Lumberjack can chop additional trees and zones. Lumberjack also gets boosts, quick logging, logging speed increased by 4%, primary woods crit chance, primarily logging crit chance increased by 2.5%. So basically Lumberjack is just gonna help you gather trees in the zones. The only important things that Lumberjack has is this. Broadleaf. When logging for level 4 wood, there's a 6% chance to get a profession exclusive secondary resource Broadleaf. Basically Broadleaf, as you can see this one, Miner, as you can see this one, Silicon. When digging for level 4 ore, there's a 8% chance to get a profession exclusive secondary resource Silicon. And if you go to Hemp Picker, this is the same. Jute Stem. When gathering level 4 hemp, there's a 12% chance to get a profession exclusive secondary resource Jute Stem. What this means is these three professions are just the gathering professions. The broadleaf, the jute stem, and the silicon that I was talking about, it is all located in this location right here, Mount Snow. So if you go to Mount Snow, as you can see, in this zone there is trees. There is special trees that you can also chop, which are the tree stumps. That is for the lumberjack. There is hemp that only the hemp picker can gather. It is for all the zones, by the way, guys. In desert, Charlestown, winter zones, and so on, so on. So since I'm a miner profession, here's what the miner is special for. If you find a, a copper node, can be only mined by the miner. So if I mine this, I will get copper ores, and also at the same time, I will get silicon. As you can see, I got two silicons from this, and I also had a crit. So this is the silicon. It does sell for quite a bit. Depending on what server you're playing, this silicon can be sold for a little bit of gold. Depending on the server you play, if the server is new and you reach level 30 gathering for the zone, you can sell this resource pretty easily above 50%. But if you're playing in an old server, this item might not be that easy to sell, but you can still sell it for a lot of gold. So basically, you just farm copper nodes, and if you're a miner, this is all you do. If you're a lumberjack, you chop trees and get the broadleaf, but since I'm not a lumberjack, I cannot get the broadleaf. And also, you have to upgrade your certification skills, which is here. So as you can see, this one, when digging for level 4 ore, chance to get copper ore increased by 5%. And I did not upgrade that because I don't need copper ores. Silicon though, you want to upgrade this one because this skill increases the chance to obtain silicon. Same for hemp picker, same for lumberjack. A well, hemp picker just picks up hemp and you get jute stems out of that, which is also sold in the market. So miner, lumberjack, hemp picker, all these three professions have exclusive profession items that are obtained from the zones. Once again, these special items are only obtained from this zone right over here, Mount Snow. You need level 30 gathering for this. So now, moving on to the professions again. About the Lumberjack, Miner and Hemp Picker. These starting professions don't really mean a lot. It's basically a dollar consuming skill to upgrade these skills right here. Quick Gather, Primary Hemp Crit Chance. Unless if you're having a hard time gathering rocks, lumber or hemp, you can always upgrade the Crit Chance to get double the amount when picking up and possibly if you get the critical chance on picking you get double materials so this might be worth upgrading because it adds up to this too jute stem because you know if you get the critical chance on picking up jute stems you will get double of the jute stems same goes for miner lumberjack and so on firearms maker is something more special you can make molotovs which is kind of meh but it's like basically a crafting profession, which is also good. Gunmaker isn't that bad. So this first skill right here, sturdiness lost during weapon refinement decreased by 5%. So sturdiness, when you craft a weapon, is just basically gonna make your weapon last longer. So for example, you will be able to repair the weapon a little bit more than the people without this certification. But of course, you have to upgrade the skill to unlock this. Next up, 
Lucky production, when making pig iron, iron castings and hard aluminum alloys, there is a 5% chance to get one extra product. So just basically, you know, gun makers like a blacksmith, just when you make all those alloys, you will just get a chance to obtain one extra product when crafting iron and so on. It's pretty self-explanatory here. MP9 enhancement, this one is a really great skill because you will be able to make a rare UMP9. In addition, you will be able to sell it instantly in the market since it's a rare item. What I am talking about is if you go to your Make Weapons tab and if you go Uzi, as you can see, every weapon has this fourth skin right over here. UMP9 also has a diamond item skin, which is this, and only a gun maker can make this type of skin on this UMP9. These skins are obtained by researching, not by choosing the gunmaker profession. But this skin, Gunmaker 2, learns UMP9 enhancement, as you can see. It's all written down there. And note, every fourth skin you unlock is always tradable. You do not need to upgrade the gun at all. You can instantly proceed and sell the gun. Back to Firearms Maker. This steel pipe making is unlocks to get a steel pipe formula. So basically, silicon, jute stem, and broad leaves are used all together for making new armor in level 8 house, AKs, and such stuff like that. All these end game items. So you will definitely need to spend gold end game, and you will need to make gold yourself to make armor. This is where the professions come in handy. Each profession has its own advantage. So if you go to resource tab in the market, and if you scroll down, broad leaves, as you can see, 100 for sale. And they're dropping price a lot because a lot of people are lumberjacks. If you go to miner, silicon, this is actually sold for 156 per piece. But later, when you're starting one month, for one month, I guarantee you that this price will be 229 per piece. One silicon will grant you 229 gold. That's the 50% price, and it's actually pretty expensive. So if you go down here, leather, steel pipe, polyester cloth and steel. Steel pipe is crafted by a miner because only a miner can obtain the silicon for this resource. Steel pipe can be crafted only by a firearms maker. Polyester cloth can be crafted by anyone, but there's a problem for that because polyester cloth requires you broad leaves and juice stems. Broad leaf is obtained only by a lumberjack and juice stem is obtained only by a hemp picker meaning you will either choose that or that. Regardless, you will still have to use the market to buy these resources, so it doesn't really matter. Leather is made by Armorer. This is the most expensive resource because there is not that many people selling leather, meaning Armorer is the most broken profession in this game. A Armorer profession is a pretty good profession to be honest. It is probably the best source of gold making profession. Although it might seem too easy to play as an armorer because you can get thousands of gold every day. Other professions are great too and I don't really suggest everyone to choose armorer. You want to have some variety in this game because if everyone chooses armorer there will be no steel pipes in this game or no miners in this game so you know you want to have some variety in this game. But although armorer does make a lot of gold. One leather piece sells for 700. It is quite cheap because this has dropped but it was 2k per piece so leather is definitely a way to make money and armor can actually make loads of more stuff but i'll get into that later back to the professions now so firearms maker steel pipe that's what it's used for steel pipe is used for making weapons ak's such stuff like that this one assembly line production ammunition in produced ammo boxes increased by five percent might be a good profession but for a five percent i think it's like eh I think it's kind of expensive to upgrade this just for dollars, but whatever. The most useful is this and this. These two skills right over here. The MP9 enhancement, steel pipe, and also maybe the lucky production. But you know, once you max out the skill, you will have like 25% to get extra product, not just 5%. And once you max out this one, you will have 25% too maybe. That might be useful, but it is going to be costy. Moving to armorer. So backpack production is the first skill that you will be able to upgrade. The first one is the hiking bag, which looks kinda not really good and there's four more bags which i will show in a second but let me just get on the skills now armor recovery master sturdiness loss during armor refinement decreased by five percent basically same as the firearms maker sturdiness loss during weapon refinement so this is for weapons just you increase the sturdiness for weapons and armor increases the sturdiness for armor 
pretty simple. So you will have an ability to repair your armor more than the other players that don't have armor chosen. Third profession, lucky production. When making a rag, fabric or nylon cloth, there is a 5% chance of getting one extra product. Same as the firearms maker when making alloys. This one just goes with cloth. So you make like nylon, whatever cloth, you get a chance of 5% to get one extra. Pretty self-explanatory. The most important thing, punk jacket for the armorer. Get punk jacket formula. An armorer can make a punk jacket and once you unlock the skill of the punk jacket, you will get a new recipe in your craftings list, which you will be able to craft and sell in the market. Although the punk jacket does not come rare, so you will have to upgrade your punk jacket in the blueprint machine first to be able to sell it. I will get to that later too. Next, leather making technology. Unlock to get a profession exclusive semi-finished leather formula. Pretty self-explanatory, you get a new recipe, craft the leather, sell it in the market, easy gold easy life. And lastly, level 4 expand backpack. Unlock to get a profession exclusive level 4 backpack expansion material formula. Self-explanatory level 4 backpack. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. If you go to armor's shop right over here, talk to Lisa and expand backpack, you will need that level 4 backpack, which is only crafted by the armorer. If you go to the market now, go to trade city, let's start from backpacks. So backpack, hiking bag is the first one you can craft for the armorer. Second bag is dark gray travel, third bag is navy blue shoulder, third is pink school bag, and last one is fox backpack. People are selling this, but on Miskatown, I don't think anyone's buying anymore because everyone has those. But yeah, pink school bag can be sold for some gold. Right now it's selling in for 35,000 gold in Sandcastle. It will drop, but it won't drop that much. The prices, guys, depends on the quantity of the materials that it requires to craft and on the price of other materials that's supposed to be used to crafting this backpack. And lastly, the most important thing is level 4 expand backpack. As you can see, everyone's selling it for 40k in the market and people are not buying this anymore. It has dropped the price a lot. But if you're playing in Sandcastle, expect the price to be 130,000 gold. That is because people are going to start reaching it and people are going to buy the backpack. So, if you're an armorer, congratulations, get that backpack level and start selling those backpacks for some gold. Yes, armorer does make gold. That's it for armorer now, let's move on to the builder profession. If you take a look, builder profession is something a little bit more poopy, but you get to make a advanced fertilizer formula, which is a blue fertilizer. To be honest, it is good for me, and at the same time, not that good. I don't know on this one, guys, you will decide, do you like making fertilizers and selling it for 200 gold each in the market or not. Second skill is fine construction. When building, upgrading and repairing in a transfer station, costs are decreased by 5%. I don't think this is that bad because you get decreased costs when building a base in Charlestown. The clan rating base base, not the home base. I think this is worth upgrading if you have access to the Charlestown base. You can make portable landmines and bring it with you in Charlestown, you know, zones, everywhere else and just put them down. This might be useful for defending Charlestown raids and so on, but I'm not really sure on this one. Builder is like a supportive profession. Lucky production, when making wooden boards, bricks and cement, there is a 5% chance to get one extra product. These resources are very easy to get. You can make lamps, unlock to get a minimalist lamp formula. You can sell minimalist lamps to other players in Trade City. This one might be useful, but again, I don't think people really buy lamps unless they really want to decorate their houses. People might buy this, but for me, this profession is a little bit lame, so if you don't want this, I suggest to not choose it. Serendipity, I don't know what that means, but when opening chests in the wilderness, there is a 5% chance to get new dollars. That, I have never seen this before, but I'm not sure how this works, but I think when you open a box, you will get either 50 or 100 new dollars. To be honest, upgrading this skill will cost you like 80k dollars, so I think this is useless. The only useful thing is this fertilizer and maybe this skill here, but I would never choose this profession, so don't choose furniture maker. Rifleman, a pay to win profession. Sniper, a pay to win profession. Warrior, a pay to win profession. If you're a guy, who doesn't give a damn in this game. Why I'm calling this pay to win is because I see most of the pay to win players just use these professions. Not necessarily, but I see some free to play players to use this too. But these professions here basically give you advantage in the combat a little bit. But at the same time, 
I don't, I don't think that these professions are good. So the Rifleman, first skill, can root out extra loot from the infected in Charlestown or Farstar City. I've never used this profession, never asked anyone, so I'm not sure how this skill works. Kinda useless. Second skill, break the surface. When using an assault rifle, submachine gun, rifle or shotgun to continuously deal damage to a single enemy, damage is increased gradually up to a maximum of 5%. That's pretty self-explanatory, the more damage you do, the damage just starts increasing and increasing to a maximum of 5%. Third skill, destructive madman. When using an assault rifle, blah blah blah, damage dealt to buildings inc is increased by 8%. So it just increases your damage. Nothing really simple. Medal of Honor. When using an assault rifle, blah blah blah, increased by 1% for every hostile player that is beaten down. Maximum of 5%. So the more people you kill, the more damage you get. Maximum is 5%. This is probably upgraded up to 5. Battlefield Recovery. When using an assault rifle, blah blah blah, medicine's recovery effect is increased by 10%. So when you shoot, I just think that you heal up maybe 2 HP per shot, or I think you just get a higher boost when healing up with bandages. I'm not really sure on this skill. And the last skill, Crippling Fire. When using an assault rifle, submachine gun, or blah blah blah, the first shot in the battle cripples the enemy slowing them by 5% and preventing them from sprinting for the next 3 seconds. That might be good, because you know, a lot of people just ditch fights and they just sprint out and so on. I don't really know what to say about these three professions guys, but I can tell you that they're kinda bad if you're a player who doesn't like PvP. These three professions are PvP professions, and you should choose them only if you're playing this game for PvP and not PvA. If you're a PvP player, go ahead, choose a sniper or something if you like sniping, if you like bows, that is pretty good. If you're a rifleman, if you like AKs, some machine guns, shotguns, go for rifleman. And if you're a warrior who likes bashing people with baseball bats, choose that. Although warrior, I suggest not choosing this. Choose either the rifleman or the sniper, but not the warrior. Before you're going to actually hit an enemy with the baseball bat, you're gonna be downed already, so yeah. So sniper can root out extra loot from hostile soldiers in Charlestown or Farstar City. Same as the rifleman, but this is from hostile soldiers, not from boxes. Let the bullets fly, and using a sniper rifle, bow or bazooka damage is increased by 1% for every 80 yards bullet travels up. So what this means is this skill, the more far the enemy is, the more damage you do. That doesn't really make sense, I'm not really sure how this works, but it just increases damage more far the bullet is. Yeah, that's kinda logical. Or maybe I just misunderstood. Third skill is marker bullet. When using a sniper rifle, bow or bazooka, the enemy that is hit will be marked within 3 seconds. So if you hit the enemy, cha ching he's gonna be marked for 3 seconds and you will be able to see him. Behind walls, wherever he is, you will be able to see him for 3 seconds. Might increase once upgrading this or maybe it's just a one-time upgrade skill fourth skill is tear wound when using a sniper rifle bow or bazooka when damage is dealt to enemies with less than 40 percent hp they will be injured for a continuous five seconds taking three damage per second so if you hit them when they're below 40 percent hp they will just start bleeding out it's like a poison buff you know they will start receiving damage for five seconds three damage for five seconds might seem like nothing but once you hit him like five times he actually might bleed to death and start his bleeding effect head blow when using a sniper rifle bow or bazooka headshot damage is increased by percent the enemy receiving headshot damage gets blurred vision for two seconds so once you hit the enemy it's basically the same when a bazooka explodes or a grenade launcher explodes you will get a blurry vision for two seconds and getting a headshot from a sniper is gonna be deadly because the damage is going to be insane if the guy has a great sniper you might get knocked out out of one shot lastly calm blood when gun sights are on breath hold bar reduction speed is 10 percent slower so it's basically when you aim a sniper, as you can see, hold your breath, that's the breath I'm talking about. The breath gets increased if you're a sniper and has upgraded the skill. After you lose breath, the weapon will become shaky, and that's pretty much it. And once you run out of the breath too, this weapon is going to zoom out a little bit slower than normally with full breath. But when you're using a sniper, you don't even need to zoom in, all you can do is just press, is just tap shoot once, like that and it will instantly shoot. So the breath meter is actually useless. You can aim with the circle in the middle right there. As you can see, instantly aims on his head without needing to aim like that. Unless you just want to see 
from a closer distance. So a profession can be chosen at level 10 gathering, a profession can be upgraded to level 2 at level 20 gathering, and a profession can be maximized at level 30 gathering. When you get a profession, you will be called minor 1, then that's when you get gathering 10, and then you upgrade your profession, you will get minor 2, like that. Once you upgrade your profession to level 3, you will get minor 3 or whatever other profession you choose. If you choose logger, you will be logger 1, and so on. So my tip, what profession to choose. Miner is great, but at the same time, I did not like Miner because of one reason. Mining is slow and finding rocks is frustrating, okay? I don't like mining. If you like cutting trees, cut trees instead. Cutting trees is way easier than mining rocks and the price for silicon and for bro leaves is basically the same. So these professions are the same. You either chop or mine. But as I said, finding rocks is hotter. So lumberjack passes the miner. I suggest choosing lumberjack if you want to. You will be able to get tree oils from chopping stumps and other stuff sees chopping trees in desert to get wood cores way easier. But miner, no additional resources because most of the rocks are already easy to get. You can also choose the hand picker if you really want to, it's a great profession too. Jute stems have 12% chance to get, while a miner has 8%, while a lumberjack has 6%. Why 6%? It's because, as I said, trees are really easy to find and you can chop trees really fast. If you want gun maker, you can choose this too for gold making. Armorer, pretty good profession too. All these, lumberjack, miner, hand picker, firearms maker, armorer, the best five professions you should choose. Don't choose furniture maker, rifleman, sniper, warrior. Do not choose those unless you're a PvP player and you know the game. You can choose the rifleman or sniper. But if you're a beginner, if you're starting, lumberjack, hand picker, firearms maker, armorer. I'm not saying that miner is a bad profession, but I would never choose it ever again because I don't like it. Maybe you guys will like it. I don't know. It's your choice what to choose. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you guys out there. In the comment section, leave some feedback guys and leave a like if it did of course help you. I'll see you guys next time and peace out.